Herkese merhaba. Ben Alex, 35 yaşındayım. İngilizim. Ben 3 yılda İstanbul'da otuyorum ve İstanbul çok severim. Yemek çok lezzetli, insanlar çok hoş. Ben Campbell'de eğitmenim. The biggest difficulty that I find Turkish people have is having confidence in speaking. But second to that is writing emails. While the fear of speaking with a native speaker might be the biggest struggle for Turkish learners of English, for people who are working in the business world, writing nice, clear emails is the hardest part. Okay? Business English can be very difficult. And what I want to tell you today is a few things. Some advice, how to relax, how to make sure that you don't spend four hours looking up every single word in the dictionary for every email, uh, worrying about grammatical mistakes, and also giving you a few phrases that you can put into your email knowing that, there are, that it will come across well. Writing is the same as speaking. It takes time and it takes practice. Okay. The main goal of writing an email is communication. Okay. So when you're writing your first few emails, when you're building your confidence, when you're starting to practice, make sure this is where you concentrate on. Even if your English isn't perfect, no one's going to judge you for it. Okay? Just make sure that your points are clear. So, what techniques can we use for clear communication? Well, the first one in an email is making sure that when you start the email and end the email, you're not worrying about it and you know what you're going to write. Okay? Start an email with dear, if it's very formal. If you know the person, or it's a colleague, feel free to start with hello or hi. It's, it's not rocket science, it's not the most complicated thing in the world, but it is something to consider, okay? Finish your email with regards, okay? This regards will cover any situation. You can also think about using thanks in advance, which will tell the person reading it, hey, I'm expecting a response, I'm expecting you to do something. And this is something that uh, has been proven to get more responses, okay? So if you're not going to use regards, try thanks in advance. One thing I see a lot, which I personally don't like, is ending an email with best, okay? It's kind of a short um, term for best regards or best wishes. For me, it seems lazy and a little bit too informal unless you're talking to someone you know very well. This is why I recommend regards or thanks in advance. As I said at the beginning, the most important thing in the email is communication. Avoid using long sentences and long paragraphs. Even as a native speaker, this is something I try not to do. The longer the sentence, the longer the paragraph, the more chance people won't read, the more chance that people will misunderstand, the more chance that you'll find it difficult to write. So why not use bullet points? Why not break down your ideas into simple lines rather than trying to make an overcomplicated sentence? This is not a TOEFL or an IELTS response. This is purely a way of telling somebody some information. When writing emails, don't be afraid to be simple and direct. Okay? We all know when receiving an email from a foreigner, it's not their native language. All right? You might want to use complicated modal verbs. Would you be able to blah, blah, But it, there's no need, okay? Uh, tell someone directly, please do this. Please respond as soon as possible, okay? It's not rude, you've added please, but it's much, much clearer and much easier for you to write without overthinking things. Also, don't be afraid to state the obvious. I am writing to you because, and tell them what the purpose of this email is, okay? Be open and honest with your communication. Now, there's no reason to apologize for the level of your English, okay? We all write at different levels. When I write Turkish, there are so many mistakes, but at the same time, every time I write, I'm learning, I'm practicing, I notice my own mistakes. Other people point out my mistakes. 
Okay, this is the way we get better. Practice and getting rid of mistakes. So don't need to apologize for your English, okay? Be proud that you speak a second or a third or a fourth language. This is something that you should enjoy doing. You can be open. Tell people, if you don't understand this part, please tell me, okay? Again, we use the simple sentence, please tell me. And it shows that, okay, this part, I am not so sure of my English, without apologizing, just, if you're not sure, please tell me. Such a simple way to be so kind and so uh, open that you're bound to get a good response from your address. Another thing you can do is summarize the email, okay? This gives people the chance to understand what the email is about. You might have five people or 10 people reading this email, but it's only relevant in detail to one or two. The last piece of general advice I want to give you is ask friends and colleagues. In Turkey, sometimes people are ashamed of their level of English. They are embarrassed. Oh, my English is so bad. I don't know anything. They are worried that other people will judge them for their levels of English. The only way you're going to get better is to practice. You might not have a Kambali tutor available to you 24 seven at your desk at work, but you do have colleagues. Okay. You can ask them for help. You can ask them, Hey, do you know a way of saying this in English? Could you look at my email for me? They will advise you. They might not know the right answer, but at least you can work with them. Later, if you really want to check, did I write the correct answer? You can ask a Cambly tutor. There are Cambly tutors who are experts in writing business emails using business English. They can give you the most English way of saying something. And slowly, every time you use these phrases, every time you write a new email, your English will improve. So let's take a look at a couple of examples that we can use. Some easy phrases to put into most emails. First one, I am making contact in regards to, and then something. Okay. I'm making contact in regards to our meeting last week. Such simple and elegant and beautiful way of telling them why you're writing this email. You could even simplify it further. I am writing to tell you, I am writing to inform you that, okay. Very simple ways of telling people why you are writing this email. Maybe you are waiting for a response from a customer or someone else. Okay. Could you please provide me with an update on? Please let me know where we are at. Okay. Two very simple phrases to ask for an update. We talked earlier about how sometimes you might write that you're not sure you're explaining a point well. Maybe you didn't understand something in a previous email they write. So why don't you ask, could you please clarify? Could you please explain in more detail this specific point? Another phrase we use a lot in English is, I am afraid that. I am afraid that. This is a way for us to apologize. Okay. So we can always say, I'm sorry that my email is late. But more common, we would say something like, I am afraid that I cannot help you in this issue. Okay, it's a way for us to apologize. I'm afraid that. Another thing you might want to express or talk about is something you didn't like from the other person. In this case, we often say something like, I am disappointed to learn that. I am disappointed to learn that you no longer have this product. Okay. It's a nice, polite, formal way to say that you are upset or angry. In response to this, they may say we are sorry. This is a very simple apology, but more commonly, we would say something like, I regret to inform you or 
Uh, I would like to apologize for this fact. I would like to apologize that we no longer sell this product. Finally, a nice polite way to get towards the end of an email is say something like, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if there is something that's not clear, please let me know. So, in this lesson, we looked at some techniques we can use to make sure that we're writing emails that are clear, that get our point across, and that don't make it a stress to have to write in English. We also took some very basic sentences that we can add to almost any email, that we can use in a variety of situations, that you know are correct, and that you can use all the time, which in the long term will help you write nice English, okay? Will make you more confident to write an email because you know 75% of it is perhaps already done. You're just adding the specific points of this email, okay? And as time goes on, you might start dropping some of these learned phrases and start speaking more naturally. For emails, it's the same as speaking. You need to practice, okay? Over time, it'll get easier. Dalmaya, dalmaya, göl olur. Bir yabancı dil öğrenmen için pratik ve konuşma lazım. Ben mesela İstanbul yaşıyorum. Her zaman native speaker Türkler konuşuyorum. Yavaş yavaş daha iyi konuşabilirim. Kambeli'de tüm eğitimlerin ana dili İngilizce. Bu kod ile ücretsiz denebilirsiniz.